and happy Sabbath. All right, so welcome to this weekend's Prophecy Seminar titled The Inauguration. Um, of course, we are um, students of Bible prophecy, and we are told that we must uh, study the events that are taking place around us and compare them with the predictions of God's Word. Amen? And so tonight, this weekend, as we gather, um, we will do just that. We will go into God's Word. And we'll, we'll go into some things old first to refresh our memories, to, to help us to, to, to get a firm foundation. And then we can move on to what the Lord is opening up in relation to what is taking place around us. Uh, praise God for His Word, for it sets a rock underneath our feet. And so this weekend, it is our hope that everyone will leave here with a, even a better understanding or at least the zeal to go and understand these things as the Lord is opening them up. I trust that everyone has the notes. Uh, so without further ado, let us reverently kneel for prayer. All right, so we know that the Lord has been leading us step by step through, through his word. And to illustrate that, he has given us many object lessons. And um, one such lesson is in the first uh, um, vision here from CET 180, paragraph 1, where they were walking on the narrow path, right? And we know that at some point some cords came down. And I, I like it because I know there was a time when we was walking and we had um, everything, you know, we was understanding things on the way along. And we came to this point, 50 of the fourth month, and the courts came down. The Lord brought us to this point, light before the exceeding bright light. And he taught us that at the light is where the courts come down. But then we came here, which is the light, and we started realizing, well, there's much to understand. In fact, even some of the things that was taking place in our own country, we was not understanding. And so this, this quote, really helped me to put into perspective and so that we can see how the Lord is, is leading us. The bold part says, At this point, small cords were let down from the top of the pure white wall. These we eagerly grasped to aid us in keeping our balance upon the path. Continuing on, go to, to the next section. It says in the bold part, We then suspended what? Nearly our whole weight upon the cords, exclaiming, we have hold from above, we have hold from above. That, that, that is showing our trust in God's word, how we are allowing God's word to lead and guide our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. But as you come down to the last part, she says, um, is it? she says, much of the time we were compelled to suspend our whole weight upon the cords which increase in size as we progress. So as we have taken the cord on the fifth day of the fourth month, we recognize that at times there appear to be no earth beneath our feet. Amen? Amen. We, we, we don't understand clearly what is happening in our world, what the Lord is doing, what even the Bible is trying to show us. But again, she says, we put our whole weight upon the, on, upon the word of God. Right? And so the Lord has brought us to this point. As we've leaned on that cord, the cord is expanding. This is why we're here, because the cord is expanding. And uh, the cord increased according to the size of the person. So those that gathered little had no lack, and those that gathered much had nothing over. Amen? All right, so now let's look at this fourth kingdom. In Education 179, top of page 2, paragraph 3, Sister White says, The crown moved from Israel, the crown removed from Israel, passed successively to the kingdoms of Babylon, Middle Persia, Grecia, and Rome. God says it shall be no more until he come whose right it is. And who, whose right is it? Christ. And when does he come? At the end. At the end of the plagues, right? So Christ comes on the seventh plague. And Christ comes in the last kingdom, right? So when we go to our line, we know that 
the history begins at the Sunday law. Amen? Time of the end. Taking us all the way down to the coming of Christ. And the Bible tells us there's four kingdoms. Babylon, Media, Persia, Grisha, and Rome. And as such, we can see here um, from the Sunday law to the final review, Babylon. And we know that at the end of, Bab of the Babylonish captivity, who came? And the people went where? Into the freedom, right? Bringing them into this little time of peace in the kingdom of Medes and the Persians. And the Grecians come, come back, right? And now, um, at the end of the Medes and the Persians, it's the Grecians leading us down to the fourth kingdom, right? And the fourth kingdom is the Romans leading us down to the second coming. He come who's riding. So it's easy to see on this line, Daniel chapter 2, Babylon, Media, Persia, Grisha, Rome. Amen? And Sister White says in the next quote that this time is what? In the next line. This time is that? Who is she talking to? You and I. And we recognize this time is coming. Right? Right here. Daniel chapter 2. Okay. She says in the bold, Before our eyes is fulfilling the Savior's prophecy of the events to precede his coming. Ye shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. Nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So she marks where it begins. Right? All these things at the beginning of Sorrow. sorrows. And in, in, in previous studies, we understand that this is at the Sunday law. Amen? Right. Easily placed. So now let's go to Daniel chapter 7. And verse 3. Daniel says, And how many beasts came out of the sea? Four great beasts came out of the sea, diverse one from another. If you go to verse 7, Daniel says, And after this, after this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and, it, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So this fourth beast is diverse, and there's a reason why the Bible would say it's diverse. It's different. What do we do with things that are different? What do we tend to do more? Kind of spend more time trying to understand it. Right? Because it's, it's, not, it's not the same. Right? So, so let's, let's continue on because Daniel does the same thing. Amen? Revelation 13 is a parallel to that, to that um, first few verses. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, verse 1, and saw a beast rise up out of the, just like Daniel. Daniel saw four beasts coming out of the sea. John sees one beast. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns. So here's another, it, the, that beast also has ten crowns, right? Just like the fourth beast of Daniel 7. Ten horns. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet or as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads that was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was heal. So that one line takes us from, from um, sorry, this few verses takes us from 538 all the way down to 1798. Are we following? Yeah. All right. So this is the same four beasts Daniel sees, right? From, um, it takes, it goes from Babylon to, nah, to the papacy, to Rome, right? Now, why is it the same for, they both see coming out of the what? Out of the seas. And in the fourth beast is what? Is the other three beasts. Right? So in the fourth beast, you have the other three kingdoms. Parallel in those two, those two histories. So, then it says, um, it says, one of his heads were wounded to death, and then the deadly wound was? Healed. Deadly wound was healed. And if it's healed, then what, what's happening to that beast? It's coming back up. Right? It's coming back up from out of the? C, and he's going to repeat this time period of 538 to 1798. So, when does the papacy come back up in our history? At the Sunday law, all right? So, it's easy to just place here. You got, uh, I'm going to just come down to the Sunday law. 538 to when? To the end, right? 1798. Now, I put this there because it is my understanding that Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 
is typifying the Sunday law time period, right? And on a fractal level, okay? So the fourth beast, so, sorry, the fourth beast, right, which is here, you could open it up and show its history, which includes the other three. Amen? All right, so um, we don't have to read verse 5. Drop down to Daniel 7, verses 16. And it says, And I came near out of one of them, sorry, I came near unto one of them that stood by, and asked the what? The what does Daniel ask for? The truth. the truth. Right? Of all these. So he told me, and he made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts which are? Are what? Four kings which shall arise out of the what? But he said those beasts came out of the sea. So where did he came from? Both. Right? The Lord is trying to teach us something. Amen? So in Revelation chapter 13, do we have a second beast? And where does it come from? It comes from the earth. Right? And what does it do? It exercises all the power of the first beast before it, right? And we know, uh, without um, too much, the, the, the fourth beast is the United States, right? Sorry, the, the, the second beast in Revelation 13, the two-horned beast, is the United States. And it does all the power of the first beast, showing that it's the Babylon, Media Persia, Grecia, and then Rome, right? All these characteristics are in this fourth beast. And we know... It's at the Sunday law when the earth beast makes this image. Amen? Amen. So it's going to happen at the Sunday law and it's going to take us down to the final review. Right? So um, in that beast is going to be repeated the four, the four kingdoms. Now Daniel 7 and verse 19. Daniel says, then I would know the what? Did I just read that? No. Then I would know the truth of the? Of the fourth beast. So Daniel now just wants to understand which beast. And John says in the fourth beast, uh, how many kingdoms are in it? Four. So Daniel is going to get an understanding of the four, of the fourth beast. And it says, uh, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. feet. And of the what? And of the ten horns. So he doesn't only want to know of the fourth beast. Right? He says the fourth beast and of the ten horns. It is imperative we understand how the ten horns fit with this fourth beast. That were in his head. And of the other which came up. So he didn't only want to know about the fourth. He wanted to know about the fourth, the ten horns, and the, and the little horn. Right? Up before whom... Uh, three fell. Um, next. Well, before we continue, as you go to Daniel, um, Daniel 8, sorry, Daniel 7, he sees a lion, a bear, and a leopard, followed by the dragon, all in this one kingdom. Right? Because he says he wanted to know the truth about the fourth. And John says, that fourth is one kingdom, right? And he says the four kingdoms are four kings. So in this one, uh, one beast, you have four, four kings. But when you go to Daniel uh, 8, you have, the, you have the two horns followed by the great horn followed by a little horn. So lion, bear, leopard followed by a little horn, uh, two horns of which the higher came up last. Notable horn followed by a, a little horn, right? And when you bring them together, what you see is you have these three, uh, this one, two, three, followed by a two-horn power. So the fourth kingdom is a what? It's, it's a two-horn power because we know that the papacy is, cl is, is, is covering what? It's only covering paganism. So the two horns are there. Amen? All right. So now as we continue, it says, And I beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days did sit. Um, until the Ancient of Days came, the judgment and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the... When do they possess the kingdom? 
So, he saw this beast all the way until the, the end, the final review, right? Because we use this line, right? So, in this fourth kingdom, how many plagues are there? Seven. So, when we come down here to this fourth, how many plagues should we see there? We should see the same seven. Ah. No. Now, this is not proportionate to anything. It's just taking us down to this point, which is the seven, seventh plague, right? But when we go to Exodus chapter 2, how many plagues come before the seven plagues? Before the seven. Exodus chapter 7 or 8. 3, right? 1, 2, 3, followed by the, the seven last plagues fall under the fourth kingdom. So as we come down to this whole history from the Sunday law to the final review, it is the fourth kingdom, but in it is repeated the history of the four kingdoms, taking us down to the seven last plagues. Are we following so far? All right, so we see this pattern, right? We know that Moses goes before Pharaoh right there, right? Okay, so continuing on, it says, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. Verse 24 says, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are what? Ten kings. And then you drop down to verse 27, it says, And kingdom and dominion and greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. So again, Daniel is just walking us down from the Sunday law all the way down to the final review, right? So let's take a look now at these ten horns. We've identified the fourth beast as um, the papacy, as, as Rome, and we know that this is typifying the Sunday law period. Now we're going to identify the ten horns that is on that beast, which means the ten horns are here from the Sunday law, amen? Because the beast comes up with seven heads and ten horns already there, right? So, in Revelation chapter 13, which we read already, it says seven heads and ten horns. And when you go to verse 11, he sees the other beast and he comes up of the earth and he speak as a, as a dragon. Revelation 12 and verse 3 tells us, Behold, the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. So, the first beast has seven heads and ten horns, and the second beast speaks like a dragon, demonstrate that it has what? The same characteristics. It has ten horns, right? So when we come to the Sunday law of the United States, we have to see these ten horns, all also here with the fourth beast. Revelation 17 gives us more um, information on these ten horns. And the ten horns which you saw us are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So there comes a time when the ten horns receive what? They receive power. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall what? These shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with? With fire, for God has put it. God has put it in his in their hearts to fulfill. Ah, this this this, this thought is nice. A mighty king shall come up and shall do according to his will. This this is what this is. And and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Revelation eighteen nine says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived how deliciously with her shall. Bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So there's a group of kings that burn her with fire. And then there's a group of kings that does what? They lament, they, sorry, they, they, they live deliciously with her and they wept when they saw her burning. So the ten, in, within the ten kings, we have to see these two, two fractions, right? Some of them love the, 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 the beast, the, the woman, and some of them will burn the woman. All right? Continuing on. Daniel says in verse 19, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. We read that already. Drop down to Daniel chapter 10. Gabriel says to Daniel, Now I am come to make thee what? Understand what shall befall thy people when? 
Sister White says that time is at yeah. hand, right? So it says, for yet the vision is for many days, but I will show thee that which is noted where? Now we have to put our whole weight on the cord, right? It's, it's all about the scriptures. And there is none that holdeth me with, hold it with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Now let's go to Daniel 11. It says, and now I will show thee the, what did Daniel want to know in chapter 7? The truth, right? The truth of the fourth beast. Gabriel says, now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength and through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. So to bring in some things we already understand, Persia, the king of, I mean, Persia, Media and Persia is what kind of kingdom? A two-horned kingdom, typifying the two-horned kingdom at the end of the world, the United States. So this tells us that in the United States at the time of the end, which I don't have it in the notes there, when, when Gabriel comes to show the truth, he says there shall stand up how many kings? Three. And the fourth shall be far richer than they all, right? So he sa he's basically saying there will be four, right? So Gabriel comes at the time of the end, right? And he's giving us this, this information. And we've identified the time of the end as when in our time? 1989. And who was the king uh, at that time? 1989. Who was, who was reigning? Well, I'll go with Bush, right? We had Bush, Bush uh, was, Reagan was transitioning to Bush, right? And we've identified at the time of the end in Daniel uh, 11, that is when Cyrus was waiting to take the throne after his uncle, right? So um, Darius was transitioning to Cyrus, right? Same, same history, right? We know that because we don't count the rise. Amen. 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 Because Daniel is in the third year of Cyrus, right? So Bush is Cyrus. And he says, there shall stand up yet, right? So after Cyrus shall be three kings. And we know those three kings. Uh, Artabanus, Obama, right? There's your three kings, right? And the Bible says the fourth shall be far richer than they all, right? And who was the fourth after Obama? And what year did Trump come into power? In the year 2016, right? So right here on our board, in our time period, we have from 2014 to 2016, and we know that in 2016, we had the fourth king. Now, so far, is it lining up with, with what the Lord is showing? Yes, right? The fourth, right? The dragon. And now we have the fourth, who? Oh, Trump, right? Now, we know that you have the seven plagues, and then you have the one, two, three, followed by the seven. Now, the three kingdoms followed by the fourth. Then you have three followed by the, by the fourth. So here we have one, two, three. Now, we know that Bush or Clinton was not here past 2014. Amen? However, 2014 typifies the time of the end, right? Now, at this moment, I can't, I can't positively identify what these three things are, but we know, based on the pattern, this, this three has to be here, right? Leading down to the, to the fourth. So I wouldn't go into that at this point. We'll just leave that off for now. And let us continue. We, we, we already know that 2016 was the fourth, right? When we take 1989 all the way down. Amen? All right. So it says... Um, the fourth shall be far richer than they all, and by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. And Grisha is a symbol for what? The for the whole world, right? What was Grisha's contribution to this world? Everything. The whole system of education, even government, right? Well, to an extent, they, they adopted it from Grisha. Yes. Amen. Yes, indeed, because there was still some kind of a 
democratic system in, in the Grecian. So, verse 3 says, A mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion which he ruled. So, the Lord has been, has been showing us that um, that in the time period of the fourth, a mighty king shall, shall stand up and do what? What does it say, the Bible say? And shall rule, right? So, now the Lord has helped us to understand. We take this history of the fourth, right? And we open it up because we saw that under the fourth, in the Sunday law, the fourth kingdom, how many, what, what repeats in there? All four. All four, right? Are we following? Mm -hmm. Amen. So we come down to this, this point, right? And you have one, two, three, and four. Taking this kingdom, uh, this, this portion of the line, because the Lord tells, helps us to see that when you come down to the fifth day of the fourth month, you're now at the end, right? The time of the, the, time of the end, which begins the fourth kingdom. So the Lord... Take this period and we open it up here. And now the Lord is showing us the present truth. What is happening for our time? What is happening right now according to his word? All right. Go to Daniel chapter 8 and verse 3. So the Bible says that this, this, this fourth kingdom comes up. All right. So when you come to 2020, who's still in power? Trump. What does the Bible say happens to him? It says, a mighty king shall stand up, right? So Daniel 8 explains to us how this mighty king stands up and how he destroys the king before him, right? It says, then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood, the ra there stood uh, uh, before the river a ram which had what? Two horns, right? And this ram, right, we're understanding every two horn power is typifying whom? United States of America, right? So, then it says, and the two horns were? Were high. But one was higher than the other, and the other came up last. Now, this next quote from GC 441 explains these two horns. It says, and the Constitution guarantees the right of the people to self-government, providing that the representatives elected by popular vote shall enact and administer laws. Freedom of religious faith was also granted, every man being permitted to worship God according to the dictates of his conscience. Republicanism and what? Protestantism became the fundamental principles of the nation. These principles are the secret of its power and... So its power comes from what? From the Constitution. And we know that in 1798, right, this is when the Bible first identified the United States in Bible prophecy. Amen? So we could definitely mark right there that it has this power at the time of the end. Amen? All right. So when we get to 2020, Trump is still in power and the two horns are still strong. Right? They're still ruling. Amen? Uh, verse 4 of Daniel chapter 8. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, an he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth, and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his, between his eyes. It says, in, in Daniel 8, it explains this notable horn. It says, the rough goat is the king of Grisha, and the great horn that is between his eyes is his what? First king. Now, the Bible makes it a point to tell us that the goat is the king of Grisha, and the great horn is its what? First king. Why would the Bible tell us that? What happens to the great horn? It gets broken, but where does Grisha go? Nowhere. Right? We have to see that. 
right? So when you come up to, to, to this line, 2014 to midway, right? You can see here I have the three horns followed by the, by the four, right? And when we get to this point here, which is a type of the fifth day of the, of the fourth month, right? Which horn do we have at, at this point according to the Bible? Which horn rises? The great horn. And it breaks the, the two horns that were there before it, right? This is, the, this is the whole point. So 2014, you have Trump. And then here comes up this, this great horn to break Trump. And we all know from what is taking place in our nation, who is this great horn literally? Like who, who is, the, is the face of the, the, the president-elect, right? All right. So let us um, continue. The Bible is going to make it plain. It says in verse 6 of Daniel 8, And he came to the ram which had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close to the ram, and he was moved with cola against him and smote the ram. And break his what? Break his two horns. And there was what? No power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hands. What is the power of the two horned beast? It's the constitution. So if this ram has no power... What is happening here according to God's word? The constitution, the constitution is not a help. Right? This is how I'm, I'm going to phrase it. It's not a help while this king is being broken. Right? And we can clear, we, we, we can, prophecy and history must agree. Amen? Yeah. So, okay, so let's look at our history. Right? You can see that in them denying his right to free speech. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Amen. So, to date, um, we have seen what happened in our elections, right? And what, what was Trump's story through the whole thing? It's fraud. Fraud based on what? Based on the United States Constitution. Well, he used every legal avenue he had to fight this election. What happened to any of them? Why? Because the Bible said so. Right? This is what I want to say. The Bible said none of them would have worked. And God's people should have seen that. The next, the next time we come around to Bible prophecy, we can't be behind. Right? We should have seen that, that none of these legal challenge, challenges were going to work. Right? And we saw it go all the way up to the Senate. Right? Even the Supreme Court denied um, the, these, these, these evidences. Right? So the Bible says he had no power to stand before the ram. And none could deliver the ram out of his, his hand. That's a plain statement. None. Right? So let's just touch. Oh, I should have touched on this earlier. So basically, when we come to 2020, the horns are broken. Right? And this new king begins to stand. Amen? So, um, the horns are broken. We could just skip this. Um, no, no. Let's, let's just put it in. This far reacher. Right? I, I should have put that in earlier, but I, I would like to put it in now. Let us see what it means to be far richer. Right? Because the Bible says the fourth shall be what? Far richer. far richer than they are. Because we have to understand who the fourth is because there is always an entity that comes up and take the fourth down. Are we following? So this far richer. In Psalm 73, verses 3, the Bible says, For I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the, of the wicked. So who prospers? The wicked. Right? For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not troubled as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence cover them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with what? Fatness. They have more than their hearts could wish. They are corrupt and speak how? 
wickedly concerning oppression. oppression. Uh, they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither and waters, are, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they, and they say, how doth God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are what? Ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. So who, who, who is rich? The wicked, right? So the fourth is what? It's wicked, right? In this context. We following? Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day, all the day long, I have, I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought of this, to know of this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I there. So if we want to know the end of the fourth kingdom, where should we go? We should go where God is. God has to bring us face to face, right? To him. This is where he teaches you. Amen. Now let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not when I, when, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then that what? Wicked. That wicked shall be revealed. So who's the wicked in this text? The papacy. It tells you, he that seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he, that he is God. It's easy to point out here the, the papacy. Amen? So the rich, the, 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 the fourth that is always rich is the, is the papacy. So when you go to Daniel chapter 11, and he comes down and he says, the fourth shall be far richer than they all. Who is he typifying? He's typifying the papacy at the, at the end of the world. But nevertheless, in a different context, who is the richest of them all? Christ. Christ. The fourth shall be? Christ shall be far richer than Because Christ come in what kingdom? In the fourth kingdom. Right? So, Continuing on, go down to Revelation 18 because we need two witnesses. It says, the merchants of these things were made rich by... Okay, she's making people rich. What does that say about her? She is the richest. Right? And then you go down to verse 17. It says, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. Right? So the Lord um, takes us down to this fourth kingdom and it's teaching us all the principles of this fourth kingdom. It shall be far richer. Amen? But the Bible says a mighty king is going to come up come and do what? Break. And break that kingdom, the two horns, which is this, the two little horns, right? It's, it's the fall of the dragon. Amen? So let's look at this, this fourth kingdom. How, when we understand how the fourth, king's, fourth king fall, it'll make more sense uh, why Biden is, is, is chosen for this time. Right? Because the Grecian kingdom is a symbol for what? For the world. Right? And Biden is a, he's a globalist. Right? He, he's about this world, uh, what's the mentality? Glo glo globalism. Right? That's how they call it. Globalism. Right? This, this interconnected world where everybody can make money off of everybody. Now that's, that's kind of the whole point of globalism. Right? So that I can sell where I want and get what I want from who I want. Right. So it says in Daniel 11 and verse 2. And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. The fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall store all against the realm of Grisha. And a mighty king shall stand up. And in Daniel 8, which we just read, Grisha takes down the fourth kingdom. This is the point I want to make. All right. Grisha takes down the fourth. So here's one example of how the fourth fall. Amen? All right. Let's look at, is pagan Rome the fourth? Yes. 
uh, three horns followed by a, a four, right? Which is pagan Rome. Amen? So it says in Daniel 11 verse 30, For the ships of Kidim shall what? Come against him. Right? I, and, and I don't have a whole lot of time to go into this. But drop down to Revelation chapter 8 and verse 7. It says, The first angel sounded and there followed what? Hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And a third part of the trees were burnt up. What is this history about? It's about the fall of pagan Rome. Right? It says, And all the green grass was what? Burnt up. How, ma how many kingdoms? The Shis of Kidim represent how many kingdoms? How many kingdoms did, pay, did this, this, they split into? Ten. Right? It's on the chart. This is the point that I'm making. When Rome fell, when Rome, uh, uh, the fall of Rome, how many, there was ten of these uh, pagan, uh, these Aryan tribes, so to speak. Right? Aryan nations. So, um, now Revelation 8 and verse 9. No, verse 8. It says, And the second angel sounded, as it were, a great mountain burning with coals. And as it were, burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. It says, And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea, and had life, died, and a third part of the sheep were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. Anybody seen a theme? Rome went down by fire. All, all these, right? So let's go down to verse 12 now. It says, And the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for the third part of it, and the night likewise. What did the fourth angel use to destroy Rome? It have to be fire. Right? Will God change? No. no. He started with fire. He's going he's gonna to end with fire. So we know that pagan Rome only typifies whom? Papal Rome. Right? So now let's look at papal Rome. We read it already. It says, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and do what? Burn her with fire. In 2 Thessalonians, well, it's, we, we haven't gotten there yet. I think I have it somewhere there. Okay, yes. So the fourth shall fall by what? Fire. By fire. How many kings, though? How many kings? Yeah, how many kings does it say? And the ten what? Ten horns. The ten horns are what? So how many kings burned the hole with fire? How many, area, how many nations were there at the fall of pagan Rome? So what does Grisha represent? The fourth always fall by? By the ten. By the ten kings. These globalists is going to always... It's, it's the south versus the, the north, Right? The, this southern power will always come and take down this northern power. But what does the north do? Comes back like a whirlwind, right? Say again. Yes, it's a representation of the United Nations. So, Daniel 11, verses 40 to 45 says, But tidings out of the east, 44 and 45. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him, Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly make away many. And he shall plant his tabernacle, the tabernacle of his palaces between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall what? Come to his end and who, who, who does Daniel 8 say come to the end? The ram. Right? And who will help him? None. Right? He has no power. So the fourth always falls in the same way. He falls without help. He falls by fire, right? The, 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 these are some, some, um, some characteristics that the Lord is showing us that we may see what's happening. So who is Biden in relation to Trump? He is that fire, right? He is that fire that comes to take down the four, all right? But we know at the same time when God is destroying the fourth, he's saving his people. 
All right, this is what we have to understand. While he's dealing with this, he's saving us at this time. And so we have to be mindful that we're doing the right thing at the right time, or else we'll get left behind. Amen? And uh, one more illustration that shows that is Sodom. What did the angels come to do to Sodom? To burn it with fire. But what, who was in Sodom? This is us. All right? We're still here, so he's giving us one opportunity to leave Sodom that he could complete the work, right? And this is why Biden has to go all the way to the end, because God's people has to be saved. Amen? All right. So you go to Revelation 18. I won't read the whole thing. Drop down to verse 8. It says, Therefore her plague shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall early be what? Burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his, of his coming. Christ is king of the ten kings. Christ is king of this earth. Right? So is Biden doing a work for Christ? Yes. But at the same time, you have to see the battle between Christ and Satan. So many different levels you have to look at. Right? So you could see... That Biden is representing one who's, because when Christ comes, he's doing this work, right? The seven last plagues. During the seven last plagues, he's, he's removing the earthiness of his people to save them at the end before he destroys the earth. It's the same thing now. What, what we're seeing now is to remove something within us, right? Something the Lord wants to remove within us that we could come up to midway and stand as his church, right? So, as we look at the fourth, it's easy to, 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 to when we bring these, these stories together, Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Daniel 8, right? Showing that all of it leads down to this fourth kingdom. But in the fourth, you have the whole history of the four kingdoms playing out, as you see in Daniel chapter uh, 8 and verses 3. Amen? And as you come down, the Lord is showing us our history, bringing us down to this fourth Donald Trump. And the reason why we know is because a couple of years ago, the Lord allowed us to predict the election of Donald Trump. Amen? Confirming for us, letting us know that God is leading us. And he's brought us down to this time. And as we understand the fourth, as we, as we come down to the fourth and we see the events taking place for a time, I know for, for, for me personally, for a time, there was just some things happening. I was like, Lord, there are so many scenarios that could have fit what was happening. But the Lord don't lead us like that, right? That's the time when we suspend our whole weight upon the cord, right? This is the time. And we search the scriptures like never before. And so now, as these things are, oh, as these things are playing out before our eyes, the Lord is giving us light on it. But all of it is to save us. Because this fire, at the end, is sure. And we get to decide if we are part of it, or if we are saved from it. This is the whole point of this. Prophecy is not just so that we know Trump and then Biden and then all that stuff is going to happen. That's not what the Lord wants us to know. The Lord wants us to search our hearts. Because while the seven last plagues is falling, right? Because this is the seventh, right? And while the seven last plagues is falling, the 144,000 is crying out to God for deliverance. Right? And so we have to be a type of that now. The Lord only saved those that sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the land. So with that said, um, hopefully we can all come and build on that. And as we build on that, by God's grace, we can have a, a greater, uh, a more clearer picture of exactly what's taking place um, in the end of the world. We're going to um, stop here, pray, take a, 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 a 10 minute break, and we'll come right back into the second um, presentation for this evening. Let us kneel for prayer. Kind, merciful Father, Lord, we want to thank you for the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Lord, Daniel prayed to know the truth of the fourth kingdom, and we kneel before you also, Lord, asking for truth on the fourth kingdom. And Lord, when he asked, Gabriel came and says, And now I will make you know what shall befall thy people in the latter days, and now I will show thee the truth. So Lord, help us to, to, to understand what will befall us in this time, and also, Lord, help us to see the truth 
of the fourth kingdom to see the truth of what is happening in the United States. And as we look through these things, O oh Lord, help us to live up to the light that we have, that we may repent of our sins, that we may cleanse our hearts, Lord, and that we may open uh, our minds to the understanding of your word, uh, further bringing us, bringing us closer to you, Lord, and, and in turn closer to each other. Be with us on your holy Sabbath day. Bless those who are listening online as well, Lord, and we pray that they too will understand. In Jesus' name, amen.